Hello everybody, it's me Wayne, back again with yet another video. So, if you have been following my channel for a while now, uh, if you have seen the discussions page, you might have known that I am starting an ethical hacking course for free on YouTube. So, uh, this is my uh, first video to begin with. So, as instructed in the previous video, uh, you can check both. I mean, you can use any any uh, hypervising hypervising software such as VMware or VirtualBox. My personal preference is VirtualBox because it's a lot smoother. It's a lot easy. It has a lot easier interface, and it doesn't lag as much as VMware. So. The, uh, the first thing you have to do is, uh, I, I've actually turned on my virtual machine right here. I'm going to power this off. So before we actually dive into the video, let me make a point that only 3% of my viewers are actually subscribed to my YouTube channel. So if you could take the time and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it would help a lot. Thank you and moving on to the video. I have actually installed a new VM right here and I'm going to do uh, the course presentation on that. So the first thing you're going to do is enhance your VM's performance. That is by do going to system, allotting a memory, allotting a higher amount of memory. I suggest 4 gigabytes if you have an 8 gigabytes uh, computer. I have 16 gigabytes, so I'm, I, ju I just went with 6 gigabytes of RAM for my Kali Linux machine. Then, as for as of the processor, I have 4 cores and 8 threads. As you can see, I have 8 virtual CPUs which can be put to work. I have chosen 3. It works perfectly. So, depending upon your system, I'm not going to actually pressurize you guys on uh, setting up the system configuration for the Kali Linux VM, it depends upon your computer. The better the computer, the better the performance. Alright, so in display, if you have a higher resolution display, like my laptop's monitor, I'm actually working on a 1080p monitor right here, so it's at 100% max. If you have a higher resolution display, like I have a 4K resolution display, so you, go, you have to set it to 200 percent uh, uh, that will make uh, that will be able to make your VM full screen also I suggest you bring down your monitors res resolution to 1080p to actually have a smooth experience while using your Kali Linux machine all right so moving on to storage uh, here you can see there is a controller SATA it, it is a SATA controller and you're going to click on that and you're going to check host cache IO so it will be unchecked by default and I'm going to check it audio you can enable audio output audio input I, re I never really like to enable audio input so let us make it stay there so as this is an old VM I've been using this for the past two months now in the network you are going to select uh, on default it is going to be on NAT then you are you're going to change it to a bridge rad adapter and then this is going to be your internal USB I mean I have a USB Wi-Fi card because my internal USB why oh, sorry my internal Wi-Fi card got damaged for you it is going to show you the chipset of your internal Wi-Fi card now select that and hit OK now again moving on to settings let's explore some more settings going to serial ports there is nothing here uh, we can do there's nothing much we can do in here and USB we will get to uh, talking about this USB Wi-Fi attacks which we are going to perform in the future lectures shared folders set it to none and I'm going to run this in uh, not full screen mode uh, so anyways if you're going to run it in full screen mode you you can disable or enable this bar uh, the mini toolbar which comes down here it's your choice and also I don't like to see all of these when my VM is running in full screen mode so I've disabled it let's hit OK and boot the VM 
I have changed the password for my VM. In, uh, it used to be root and tour, but I have disabled the tour password and changed it to something else. Now, now. Let's wait for the VM to boot up. There. And log in. We have successfully logged into our Kali Linux machine. And let us proceed with the course. I've already changed my background. And I've customized it according to my preferences. Also, I have the one line terminal. If you want to see how you can get the one line terminal and bash instead of the ZSH, you can comment it down below. Let's aim for five likes and five comments on this video for me to make, sorry, for me to make the next lecture. So, proceeding. Uh, by default, root wouldn't be enabled on your Kali Linux machine, so we are going to enable it. If you have already seen my previous video, you can skip this part. You can. I am already on root, so if you would not be on root, so you would do sudo password root, and you have to enter your old Kali Linux, I mean your current Kali Linux password, which would be Kali and then enter the new password twice. In this case, I'm going to enter my personalized password and my password has been updated successfully. I'm going to clear my screen now. So, you have Kali Linux set up, you're ready to go. So, you don't know what to do now. Now, let me open up a website. All right, guys, I am back again. So now we have this website. Whoop. Let's ignore this maker.pro. So I link this in the description so that you can actually go ahead and read this for yourselves for deeper understanding. So let us begin by looking at what is Linux. All right, I'm tired of this now. Linux is an operating systems kernel. You might have heard of Unix. Well, Linux is a Unix clone, but it is actually created by Linux Torvalds from scratch. Linux is free and open source. That means that you can simply change anything in Linux and redistribute it in your own name. There are several Linux distribution commonly called distros. Ubuntu, Red Hat, Le Linux Mint, Debian and Fedora. So the Kali Linux you are running right now is actually based on Debian. The 2020 point, actually 2019.4 update, we have switched to XFCE which actually uses less, less RAM compared to GNOME. Alright, so Linux shell or terminal. So basically a shell is a program that receives commands from the user and gives it to the OS to process and it shows the output. Linux's shell is its main part. Its distros come in GUI, that means graphical user interface. But basically Linux has a command line interface. In this tutorial we are going to cover the basic commands that we use in a Linux shell. So PWD. PWD basically stands for print working directory. So it will print the directory you are in or you are working in when this command is entered. So I am currently in root because we are root and slash root is the home for the root user which is the administrator in Linux. Now when you first open the terminal, you are in a home directory of, of your user. And guys, let me make a quick note. All while you are watching this course, just don't blindly watch me do everything. Do it alongside if you can and take notes while you are doing it alongside. Make your personalized notes so that you can go through them 
in your in the in your career in the future so to know which directory you are in you can use the pwd command it gives you it gives us the absolute path which means the path that starts from the root the root is the base of the linux file system it is denoted by the forward slash the user directory is usually something like home and username they are not running uh, their linux distribution as an administrator that's why you have to go to home and in home you can find any user that is logged onto a machine this will be very useful in ctfs like pickle rick uh, if you have watched my previous video if you haven't watched my previous video please go watch it in pickle rick we we will find a user named ubuntu in home when we gain initial access now moving on to ls ls command use the ls command to know what files are in the directory you are in you can see all the hidden files using the ls a all right so in my current directory there are a number of files uh, we can do ls which stands for list and you can find better cap history because i've installed better cap black eye desktop documents downloads uh, firewall ids ips uh, a guy's facebook txt i'm just going to remove that yes music network terminology and map fire evasion firewall evasion scans pictures public templates and videos these files uh, we are going to go through them later in the course when we get to network scanning now ls dash dash a ls dash a list dash all this will show you the hidden files which are in your current working directory or your present working directory so there are a number of files which we don't have to see so you can list them with ls dash a you can also use ls dash la to list them in an order and you can see if it is a read write only read write executable or anything like that now moving on the cd command this the cd stands for change directory use the cd command to go to a directory for example if you are in the home folder and you want to go to the downloads folder then you can type cd downloads cd downloads we have downloads right here and we are in root downloads all right uh all right now and if you want to go to the downloads folder yeah cd downloads remember this command is case sensitive and you have to type in the whole name of the folder exactly as it is suppose i am in the main directory here i want to go to media and if i do if i go to root and do nls there is no media it is in the backward directory so you have to type in the whole absolute path so cd the main admin which is root and media if i do cd space dot dot which will take you back to your previous directory and we do nls we are not in root you can do a cd root which is the home directory for this user which we are logged in as and then you can see all the files that we have so if you want to locate anything which is out of this present working directory you need to enter the whole path all right so mkdir and rmdir mkdir stands for make directory and rmdir stands for remove directory so we are going to start with the mk dir command also if you can't understand what i am saying you will eventually and make sure 
to go to this link i am i will be sure to link this link it in the description and read through it twice or thrice to actually understand whatever i'm saying and make fair notes also right so m k d i r make directory and we are going to name it course loop and if we do an ls we have a course so it will make a folder basically in your present working directory now r m d i r stands for remove directly remove directory course and now course is gone so that is it for mkdir and rmdir now rm this is used this command is used to delete files and directories rm dash r to delete just the directory it it deletes both the folder and the files containing it all right make oh, this give me a second mkdir course rm dash r course now course is gone just like that we are done with the fifth command now touch the touch command is used to create a file it can be anything from an empty text to an empty zip file for example touch new.txt all right touch new.txt we have a new.txt right here if we go to the file explorer right here and new.txt there is nothing in it currently so rm dash rf rf is remove file and new dot txt all right we can make any file we'll go through the rest of the commands in the next video so guys make sure to make, make sure to like this video subscribe to my youtube channel and get this video to 5 likes and 5 comments and i'll post the next video